This is Equip and Engage, a podcast by Subsplash, exploring how ministry, technology, and innovation come together to equip churches around the world to engage their communities. Hey, welcome to Equip and Engage. I'm Chris, part of the team here at Subsplash, and really excited to continue our series called See the Good, in which we are interviewing leaders and pastors, musicians, business executives, many others, just to hear their perspective on what's happening in the world right now, how God is still moving, how communities are thriving and adapting. And today I'm joined by Jesse Eisenhart, lead pastor at True North Church in Mullica Hills, New Jersey. Jesse, welcome. So good to have you. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, totally. I know we've almost had the chance to connect before. We were actually going to get to visit one another out at uh, your new campus in South Jersey a few months ago before COVID-19 broke out and, you know, travel canceled, postponed. We almost had the chance to meet, but here we are. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's just just crazy, but it's just grateful that you make the time for this. I think I'd love to hear just before we jump into these questions and hear perspective. Here is about you a little bit and the you know the community that you're a part of out at True North. Yeah, so um, our church uh, was founded in 2006, uh, actually by my parents, uh, Pastor Eric and Pastor Joanne. They're still on staff, right. and um, I come from a, a, a large family. And I'm one of eight. My father's one of eleven. And um, wow. but yeah, this is this is our home. This is where we were born and raised. I know that a lot of people are uprooted when God calls them and they go to different cities and different whatnot. Um, but for us, this is our home where God called yeah. us to begin. And uh, and uh, like you just stated, we just moved into our new uh, one of our new facilities in Mullica Hill, where we just com- completed our phase one building project. And uh, super excited about we had five weeks for us in the space before we got shut down so um but (laughs) it was it was an incredible um five weeks and we saw God move in powerful ways and continue um through this crazy season so uh it's been a fun time for us uh right outside of Philadelphia but um yeah South Jersey's our home and we love this place so uh excited we we have we're one church and two currently in two locations and uh really feel uh, the mandate to uh, be in the region, throughout the region, um, yeah. and so continue to make plans and vision to expand what God's already doing here. So, Yeah, I love to hear that. Well, I know that you all were so excited about what it meant to have the, the new facility. Um, five weeks, that's kind of heartbreaking, but I'm sure there was special five weeks, and hopefully we'll be back inside soon, right? Yeah, yeah, we're believing that we'll be uh, permitted to uh, to start meeting again really soon. And I, cool. I think it's, it's like every other challenge, but um, I think if you adjust to it, you can still see the, be- the best in the seasons you're in. And I think we've done that pretty well. So yeah, yeah but definitely excited to, to get back for sure. Yeah, I bet. Well, I'd love to hear just a bit more about that. I know that there is good being worked out um, by God's you know sovereign will, even in the midst of these circumstances. So we'd love to hear a bit about your perspective, even to start, where are you seeing the good in your community right now? What's happening? Yeah, you know, I think um, anytime there's a, when you gather on a typical Sunday, Chris, you know, everyone has um, their own issues, their own challenges. And, but I think when everyone uh, is forced together in a similar challenge, there tends to be, be this new bond that forms. Yeah, You're not divided by your individual challenges. Now we're united under one significant challenge. And, and for us, we've, we've seen a, a, a greater sense of closeness, if, if, that mm. is, if that's a good way to express it. I think prayer has increased in, in our family um, as a church, and we've been creative in continuing to help people. I think one of the questions that shocked me is to say, well, what are we going to do now? And I said, well, we're going to do what we've always done. Yeah. We're going to continue to reach people right. for right. Jesus, and we're going to continue to disciple them. The content doesn't change. It never yeah. changes. Yeah. just a creative methodology will change in that. And so we've um, connected with uh, hospitals and first responders and local businesses, and we've done everything we, we can and continue to do to help people, whether they're um, in need of meals. Uh, we've partnered with um, uh, elementary schools and high schools, and yeah, we've partnered yeah. with um, the elder elderly in certain communities to help deliver their medication and just being creative, you know, any possible way that we can help um, express the love of Jesus. We've been trying to do that. And so it's been, it's been good. I don't, I don't think that it's been, um, it's been challenging, but man, behind every challenge there's great opportunity. So for us, it's been really, really good. Yeah. I love to hear that. I know that 
there's just a sense of solidarity that comes out in the midst of this, you know, these challenges that bring us all together. That's kind of what happens. And it's also just the beauty and the power of God's design for the church that it's meant to live in real life in the midst of suffering and trials and challenges. It's not that um, the church ceases to exist or suddenly has to do things wildly differently um, in the midst of what's going on. So I'm glad to hear that you are experiencing that too. That's huge. Yeah. No, I think you know, listen. We every everything in our world, we typically find comfort in the preparation of, uh, or the pre-planning of everything. You know, we try to plan everything out, and everything has to be in order. And then we kind of take a deep breath and we're like, "All right, yeah. I got everything organized." And you know, I I believe the greatest faith is displayed in when God takes all that preparation and rips it up and tosses it out the window and says, "Okay, now." Yep. Now, 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 where is it? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know what else too? There's life in that, mm-hmm. you know, there's excitement in that and saying, like, yeah, wow, is. this is, this is the faith life, man. This is what I'm called to live in. And, uh, and so it's a ma- it's a, it's a matter of helping people move from that placement of fear and the nest and the need, or at least the thought of needing to have everything orchestrated and planned out. Um, and so I believe that God has inspired people of faith in this season and has deposited new dreams and new visions in their heart and excitement. And at the same time, I've seen that the, those who operate in fear, he's, he's drawing them closer to himself. So just yeah, like you expressed is. through the sovereignty of God, he's going to use this. He's not going to let anything go to waste in this season. So um, yeah, he's doing something with everyone for sure. Yeah, he definitely is. Well, I love to hear Jesse, just how you're seeing your community adapt and change. You know, this is sort of forced upon all of us to do things a little bit differently, even if our mission and visions can stay the same. But how how are you guys really changing in your community? You know, obviously, even like what we're doing right now. I mean, we had a plan, right? You were going to come out. We're actually going to talk in person. And in lieu of that, now we're doing this through Zoom. And, I, you know, part of me, when we started doing stuff through Zoom meeting, I was like, I wasn't, well, I was negative. I'm not going to lie. I was oh, yeah. negative. I was I'm kind of just, you. you know what I mean? I was like, oh, this is great. I get to talk to a computer screen, you know? And, yeah. uh, uh, but in hindsight, I said, well, well, wow. Now we can have gatherings of, you know, literally hundreds of people meeting through teams and our crews can still happen throughout the week and things can, yeah. can still transpire though. Not perfect. They can still work. So we've taken advantage of, um, not only broadcasting our Sunday experience for kids, for youth, and for the greater uh, church um, in our area, um, but we've, we've adapted the way that we've communicated things. And I think it's allowed us to kind of step back and say, is what we're doing effective, um, you know, through a broadcast versus what you're doing in face-to-face relational connectivity? It's so different. I mean, when you sit in an auditorium of a thousand empty seats and you're just preaching to a camera week in and week out, you have to, you have to see something that's not there. You yep. have to talk yep. as if there is a thousand people in the room, but they're not. But actually yep. there's more people that are being broadcast the message of salvation than ever before in the life of our church. So like I said at the beginning, it's like God uses this. And I think our ability to adapt, um, I don't think it can be an option, really. I think you have to adapt in order to yep, continue yeah. to be effective in, in reaching people. So we've utilized um, putting our services online and leaving them up course, all week, which is, which is something that we initially were like, well, let's just do it at this time and this time. We said, no, you know what? We're leaving it up all week. People can do sure. it at their leisure. And, and we've utilized Zoom through all of our, our small groups and our meetings and really empowered individuals in the life of the church just to be proactive without direction from you know, central um, office saying, hey, do this, do this. And, um, and we've heard so many incredible stories of, of life change, of people being impacted. I mean, we're getting letters of things that crews are doing that we didn't know, um, but just being the hands and feet of Jesus, the people that need it. And so um, that's what we've been seeing. And yeah, uh, it just, it, it's, it's joyful to see, you know what I mean? It's a real blessing. It's saying, man, we, we're being the church. We're not waiting. We're just, we're doing what, what we should be doing as children of God. So yeah, uh, it's been a cool thing to witness. That's so encouraging. I love to hear that, Jesse. I'm, I'm really curious what you think some of the long-term positive impact of this will be, because I think that things will be different um, months or especially years from now. It's not just going to be back to business or church as usual. 
and we forget that this happened. But what do you think the long-term impact will be for the good? Yeah, you know, I, I think anytime you find, um, I think we naturally move to a place of depending upon comforts. And we, well, yeah. we find comfort on things that are consistent and, are, and meet our expectations. And then the moment um, our comfort is taken, the moment um, what we've planned is taken away, we find a new faith really to operate in. And so I think the greatest thing that's going to come out of this is this situation exposes um, where you really place your trust, yeah, it whether it's financially, sense. right? Whether it's with your health, whether it's with your relationships and it kind of exposed the, the truth is this is a, this will expose and has exposed um, issues in, in family in relationships and marriages. Yep. Um, why? Because you're stuck in the same place Absolutely. for months, so, you know what I mean? For months on end. And God, I think all of this, just like I always tell people on Sunday, every environment is an opportunity for you to respond. Um, and so, and I say that because just because we go through the season doesn't mean you'll change. Mm. You no, know, it doesn't mean that yep. people will change. Yep. It doesn't mean that churches will change. I think when people say, you know, there's, we shouldn't go back to the way things were, go back to the normal. I think it's the way that you describe the normal. Mm. I think it, it depends yeah. where you've come from, right? I know some people are like, oh, I just wish that things were the way they were. And I'm thinking, well, if I'm you, I wouldn't want them that way because two months ago it was terrible, but you want it back to where it's almost like the people of Egypt, right? Yeah. You come yes. out of slavery and then they're like, no, we want to go back. Why? Because it's just what they were used to. They were used yep. to living in slavery. And anytime disruption happens, even if it's for their benefit, they'd rather be enslaved and at least know what to expect than live in a place of, of faith. And so um, I think the greatest thing that the church can learn through this is have a better understanding of the people that we lead. Mm. For me personally, yeah. Chris, I, 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 it's one thing to believe that our, our discipleship models and our preaching and teaching is producing something. It's another thing to actually see it happen. Mm. And, and so for me, I, and I think, you know, listen, you can say what well, the method isn't the important part. It's the byproduct of what the method produces. And if, if our method of church and development and discipleship isn't producing something of significance in people, um, we have anemic Christians and we have people that, that yeah. are, are operating with this dependency of everything being the same. And um, it's not New Testament, you know? Um, so for example, if you're like, I hope we don't go back to the way things used to be. And I'm thinking, we, we were reaching thousands of people, hundreds were coming to Christ, more people were being saved and baptized. We had hundreds and hundreds of people in growth track. I mean, I'm thinking, no, oh, I'd love to go back yeah. if that's normal. Do you know what back. I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I, I suppose it's relative to where you were. Now, if you would say, I don't want to go back to normal in the sense that I want, I'm believing God's doing something new. I'm all for that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Bring on the new things, God. Bring on the new things. I'm, I'm not interested in the same old, same old. I want God to bring new things. But I think to just say things will never be the same just for the sake of saying they're never going to be the same. Um, I just think you have to know where you're headed in order for that statement to be beneficial towards you. Um, and for us, I believe it's not only helped us better minister and equip as we are called and commissioned to do is to equip the saints. I think we've, we've been strategic in refining our methods to better equip people to, to be followers of Jesus and to be ambassadors of Christ and more so than just, making good social media posts and yep. making good press releases about what the church is doing. Yes, um, yeah. Really seeing the substance um, in conversation with people that are meeting the needs of those who are far from God. And so for us, that's, man, I think looking back on this, we're going to recognize that we've altered some things and got a new clarity and a new direction on things that really will be instrumental in shaping our future. So, I and I pray, right, that, right. And, I, and I pray that that's the, the greater picture for the whole church, you know? Yeah. Well, just, yeah, just good, couldn't agree more. And just have one more question for you. Um, love hearing your perspective so far. I'm really curious to hear how even you personally might be adapting, changing, innovating, trying something new that you're seeing a benefit from in this time. I know people are really looking just for practical advice. Um, maybe it's, you know, lifestyle stuff, or maybe it's spiritual stuff. Just, you know, what are you doing to 
to really stay sharp and actually thrive in the season where uh, things are kind of challenging? Yeah, no, I, that's a great question. I think for many of us, um, we've, we've conditioned our habits around um, organizational structure. And um, sometimes it's difficult to have discipline apart from organizational structure. But what do you do when all the structure that you've ever had has been uprooted, um, thrown in the trash, and, and all yeah. the rhythms and the balance that you've spent years um, developing in your marriage, in your family, in your you know, time with God has, has been discarded, not at your own choice, but because of right. the situations beyond your control. How do you continue to develop in seasons where all of that is gone? Because for, for me anyway, I've, I've built this framework of thinking that the only way that I can further develop myself self is if that's all in place. If it's not in place, I, and if I don't have consistency and rhythm and, and a, a balanced uh, approach to how I do life, then, then you know, I'm just walking in circles. And, and the yep. truth is, one of the things I've learned in this season is how to be fluid in 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 an unstructured environment and still grow and, yeah. and still develop muscles spiritually and emotionally that I, I, I never really had to develop when things were structured and yeah, organized. Of course. I never really, you know what I mean? I never really had to develop um, a sense of empathy or, or compassion in ways that I'm being made to now. And, Sometimes yeah. when all of the structure is pulled away, you're kind of left with the rawness of, okay, what do I do? I think, I think what is in you comes out of you in the sense of like, what scriptures have you deposited in your soul? Like, you know, when challenges and, and how do you see things? I mean, when an obstacle comes, I've taught myself over the years um, to start smiling and say, man, what an opportunity behind this obstacle it's going to be. And, mm -hmm. and y you have to train yourself in a way to like, not rely on structure and rhythm and perfection. I think being in ministry, it's, I don't know if you survive, if you have to depend upon those things in order to, to develop personally. Um, it's finding the pockets and the windows. I have uh, four children under seven. And, um, and so there's always an adjustment to the rhythm of yes, life. And, of and if you, if you refuse to, to, to modify um, your development or see that you can be developed in an, in a changing rhythm. Um, it'll be hard to lead yourself. And so that's one, one way that I've, I've continued to develop is to make sure that I, I take advantage of pockets of time that I normally would just say, Oh, I'm just going to sit down, yep. man, just yep. taking advantage of those times. And then when they're disrupted, they're disrupted. And then I just continue to yep. move on yep. and make the best totally. of each day, you know, and, um, not be overwhelmed by what, you know, what's to come tomorrow. So. Yeah, man, I hear you. I think that, you know, we are all, all are creatures of habit to different extents. And I'm certainly learning that just about myself, how there was this dependence on systems and structure and organization that just blows up and what's left, you know, yeah. I'll have to, have to make sure that there's something good and healthy left is what, yeah. what it is. Um, so yeah. it's glad that you're, you're, you know, you're able to do that and actually, you know, doing okay and thriving right now, even in the midst of this. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. the, uh, this is, I believe this is this. These are the seasons that believers are called to thrive in. Yes, that's right. Um, that's right. And I think we need to make sure that we're talking to ourselves the way that that God speaks to us, and that we see ourselves in the way that God sees us. Um, that we're not victims and we're not bystanders in seasons like this. That we can still aggressively advance the kingdom of God. Um, yep. He's Amen. still for us. He's still not against. He's not against us. And and as long as we continue to keep the word of God in our spirit, man our best days are definitely still ahead of us for sure. Yeah, man, I think you're so right. Well, Jesse, just thanks so much. I'm just encouraged by how you're seeing things in the season and glad that your community is doing well. Um, we'd love to hear, you know, if we could catch up in a few more months and just hear what it's been like to get back in the new building and, you know, bring things back to, I won't say back to normal, but just, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, bring things yeah, back yeah. into in-person community. It'll be really sweet. Yeah. I'm sure. So good. Well, hey, man, thanks for having me. I enjoyed this conversation. And definitely, we have to have you out to Jersey. I know. Let's do it. Someday soon, for sure. I'm with you. Can't wait. Well, thanks, Jesse. Thanks also to everyone for checking out Equip and Engage. We'll be back with more conversations just like this in the future. So make sure you're following or subscribe to our podcast, wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And we'll catch you next time. 
Thanks for tuning in to Equip and Engage, where we're sharing insights learned from thousands of conversations with leaders and pastors around the world. To follow along with these conversations, subscribe today or visit our website.